Hello, welcome everyone to my newest video. Sorry it's been a long while since I posted one. What I hope to share with you today is how I set up my Behringer Wing from scratch as a new unit fresh from the factory with all the factory default settings. And the purpose of this is to help beginners like myself on how to get up and running with your favorite door. I myself am using Cakewalk by Band Lab. And the process is fairly straightforward. So you follow the steps by my instructions. You should be up and running with no issue. So what I'm going to do is show you how I got my monitors connected and I'm going to connect an instrument and show you how easy it is to get up and running with your door. Now I want to get a few things out of the way. I'm not going to show you how to physically connect seeing that should be very straightforward and also bear in mind this video is for beginners i'm an amateur hobbyist myself and i certainly don't have all the answers but what i hope to do is encourage those of you that do is to share in the comments and even post up and link up your own videos in the comments so everybody can be helped uh, by this now i know this board is primarily used for uh, live situations, but there are many of us that own this that use this in a studio environment like myself Now let's get started uh, What I do have for monitors are the PreSonus Eris E8 I've got my left and right monitor here on my desk. Please excuse a mess and those are connected to the main line out 7 and 8 now as far as connecting everything Behringer seems to prefer that you use the odd numbered channels for the lefts and the even numbers for the rights. So the monitors should need a little bit of tweaking to get up and running. As far as the headphones go, they should be up and running right off the bat by default and you shouldn't have to do anything special for that if you accept the factory settings. So let's get started with the monitors. So like I said, they're connected to the main local outs on 7 and 8. So we need to get the routing for the monitor set up. So what we need to do is go into our routing page. And from the routing page, uh, we want to go onto the output section. And let's unlock the output section. Now we want to select the source group to monitor. So let's do that here and there is your monitor right here on the bottom and we're going to route the monitors from out group 7 and 8 to monitors B left and right so let's go the local outs and we want 7 to go to the monitor left let's get a bit closer there and eight to go to the right monitor okay that should be it as far as your monitors go now we're ready to connect instruments so as far as instruments go let's set up my first one on the first fader channel strip so we're going to select this one okay and my keyboard is going to be the first instrument i'm going to wire up so those are connected to your uh, local ends, your main ends, one and two. And those are the ones with uh, the combo jack, that could accept the, uh, the tip ring sleeve or the XLR connection. So I've got my left going into one and my right going into two. We need to go into our home section and click on that second menu item there. Okay, once we're on the second menu item, we want to get the uh, the main source. So we're gonna click on here. We do have a stereo source, and the beautiful thing with the wing is you can use one single channel strip for a stereo signal. So let's make that a stereo signal. We're gonna click on that there, and we've got locals one and two set for stereo. Now we need to get the signal back to the door. We're going to click on done here. We're going to click on the alternate. 
click on that blank square we're going to assign that to a USB inputs and we're going to go USB 1 and 2 okay um, now once we've done all that there's just a, a little routing that we need to do so let's click on done on here we're done on that section so again on the first channel strip we've got locals 1 and 2 and USB 1 and 2 remember the USB 1 and 2 part that's going to come into play when we're picking those tracks or those channels to record onto the door okay so what we may want to do next is click back on the home we probably want to name it so let's call this keyboard okay and the icon and color we can make everything a little bit more obvious for us I'm going to select green just for kicks and giggles I'm going to select the keyboard icon there select a, a keyboard avatar and if you notice now on our channel strip it is showing the keyboard and uh, light above colored green we just got to route that to the USB now so what we need to do is click on the routing and we need to select the outbound group so we are on the outbound here and the outbound group to USB one and we want to route it to the local in whoops we need to unlock this I'm sorry for that so local in one gets routed to here local in two over that side so we've got local in one going to USB one local in two going to USB two okay let's go back to our home page and we should be ready to record so before we do that let's just uh, connect another instrument shall we so again let's go through those steps and this time I'm going to connect my Roland Integra which is connected to the main lines three and four so what track are we going to put it on or channel one aboard let's select number two so we're going to uh, we got two selected we're going to go to that second menu item we're going to click on the main icon here and it's a stereo source and we're going to make that three and four which is what the Integra is connected to so let's get the done to set that we're going to go to the alternate and we're going to use the USB three and four stereo we're done with that all right so we got our, our keyboard on one and two and the integra on three and four now we just gotta fix up the routing for the integra so we're going to go to the routing page and from the routing page we we'll want the outbound group to usb audio we're going to select three and again I forgot to unlock it excuse me three goes here and four goes here so we've got USB three and four corresponding to the local in three and four let's go back to our home screen and let's make uh, everything a little bit more obvious here on the home we want the name so we're gonna call this in Tegra, whoops. Hard to hold a phone and type at the same time. And let's change the icon and color. Let's make this green as well. And select maybe this guy. So if we take a look at our channel strip, everything is very sensibly labeled. Okay, let's see if we got audio. We're going to bring our 
main up and we're going to get a little bit of volume going on those two channels we just made and routed to. Let's go to our door. These are the step-by-step -step instructions. I'll be putting that on the description. So this was me testing earlier. Let's go to the audio channel one. Now remember we plugged in the keyboard on USB one and two and this is how we select them. Uh, presuming that you've got the drivers and all the software loaded onto your PC or Mac, you'll be able to pick your source right here. So one and two stereo will be shown as stereo wing USB ASO driver. So let's arm this track and we should get Great, we've got some audio here. So, just going to disarm the one below it. Let's do um, a quick little record, see if this works. Let's go back to the beginning. All right, we're going to disarm. Let's hear the playback. Great, so let's mute this track and let's go to the Integra. Now we plug this into three and four, so we want to select stereo driver in three. Let's hit the demo button on the Integra, we should be able to hear some sound. All right, perfect. Let's do a little test record. I'm going to go, the tracks are armed. All right, and let's disarm. Let's go up to here where the actual playback starts and have a test listen. Perfect. Okay, well, I hope this hopes, well, <laughs> tongue tied there, forgive me. I hope this helps out a lot of you out there. So follow those step by step by gradually adding all your instruments wherever you have them plugged in, route them the way I showed you, and you should have no issues in connecting your, uh, your wing to your door. Now, the best thing I like about the wing when it's in door mode, the beauty of that is you have 24 faders. And in my case, I got a dedicated console monitor right above the wing. And it's just great to be able to have access to 24 channel strips all at the same time. To my knowledge, there is no other control surface. Um, slash user interface that does double duty that will enable you to do that maybe except for the PreSonus Live um, but uh, this is pretty much why I purchased the wing to enable me to perform this function so seeing that Behringer's got a lot of the issues sorted out um, it's been a great addition to my home studio and so far um, I'm loving it Hopefully the rest of you would have great success, make great music. And again, any experts out there, please, please chime in, make the videos. Um, there's just still two outlying questions that I don't know and that I haven't conquered on a wing yet is how to create a um, hardware loopback um, signal chain so I can plug in an effects and route to those effects if someone could do a step-by-step -step, um, video on that, that would be great. Also, the videos by Drew Brashler that he started to put up are very, very informative, very helpful. And I do recommend you checking out his channel. Well, in the meantime, uh, good luck to everyone. Hope you have a lot of success and make wonderful music and stay safe out there. Bye-bye for now.